Hello again, everybody. This is Craig Evans of Autism Hangout, and thank you for tuning into this Autism Hangout special report. As with the spectrum it represents, autism is a topic of extremes, and many of you are familiar with the raging debate of cure versus accept. Well, filmmaker Todd Dresner has a son on the spectrum, and his name is Sam. And to better understand Sam's world and those like him, Todd took his camera's eye into Sam's world. Todd's film is called Loving Lamp Posts, and it depicts a world of wonder and beauty. And it opens the door to more valid discussions around autism as a disability, or simply a difference of perspective. So Autism Hangout, please welcome filmmaker Todd Dresner. Todd, welcome to Autism Hangout. Thanks for having me, Craig. I love seeing people that can take a film and make a statement, generally a positive statement, about life through somebody else's eyes. And what I've seen in the trailer of your film is just that. So can you tell us a little bit more about what maybe were your primary discoveries in looking at the world through Sam's eye? Sure. Well, uh, as you mentioned, the film's called Loving Land Posts. And uh, I was taking Sam home one afternoon from his uh, route in Prospect Park in Brooklyn, where we live, where he likes to go visit uh, a bunch of land posts. And, um, we had recently gotten his autism diagnosis, and it occurred to me that uh, there were sort of two ways of looking at his behavior, and one was to say that his, his love of land post was quote-unquote autistic behavior, and that it would be something we should try to get rid of. And the other sort of acceptance idea is that this is just a, a difference that he has. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew that this was a big debate in the autism world, and and I also knew that uh, in Sam's case, he didn't have some of the more severe behaviors that are sometimes associated with autism. So I wanted to meet some other people to see whether the idea of acceptance could happen even among people who do have more mm -hmm. severe cases of autism. So uh, I just started going out and, and meeting a lot of different people and getting as wide a perspective as I could uh, mm -hmm. on this debate. Well, let's take a look at the trailer that's online right now, and that's going to open up the door to a few more things that we'll talk about here in a moment. What kind of kid chooses to spend his time ritually visiting lampposts? Autism is a developmental disorder and disability. She looked to me and, and said, your son has autism. And my first reaction was relief. That I wasn't crazy. I yelled at them. I said, what are you looking at? Why are you staring at him? I believe that autism is a medical diagnosis and not a psychiatric diagnosis. We really think of it as a systemic disorder. And a whole body system disorder. You were really healthy and fine. Mommy vaccinated you, and then you started having seizures, and then you lost your language. If you can fix the body before the brain does damage to itself, then you've got a shot at recovering the kid. Recovery isn't, that's not the point anymore for him. We have to do what we can to help him do well, learn in the ways that he can. The doctor said, we need to cure people with autism, and she said, you cure him, you treat people. The potential of those of us with autism is like the potential of anybody else. It's unlimited. I just think that for a person with a disability, you just have to stop thinking about normal. And what does the police man do? Oh, people. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Don't decide in advance what Wendy's going to look like because you haven't got a big enough imagination for what your child could become. I always sit every night wondering what will happen now. Why is it that we have such a growth in the number of children who are being diagnosed with this disorder? And should we not be concerned about that? The increased prevalence of autism is an achievement. When a parent first finds out that their child is on the spectrum, 
uh, they're they're given into a lot of fear or a lot and in fact it's mostly fear because they don't really know what to expect in the future I know that your message through the film to them would be that this is something that you can not only live with but somebody can thrive with how would you um, what sort of messages do you get from adults older people that are on the spectrum well it's interesting um, I found that some parents who have accepted their children's autism were able to do that because they know uh, adults with autism and they've been able to see what life might be like for their children when they become adults. Uh, and so hearing that, I, I wanted to get some adults with autism into the film. Uh, there's so much attention paid to children nowadays, and rightly so, but we often hear the question, where are all the adults with autism? And in fact, they are out there. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to put them into this film. Uh, there are some adults in the film who are very well known in the autism community. For example, Stephen Shore, who uh, I think you know. And, um, and there are some adults who I don't think are, are known at all, but have amazing stories. Um, for example, uh, one of the characters in the film is Lila Howard, who is an 87-year-old mother of an autistic son who was born in 1951. Or autism was... You know, it had barely even been uh, named at that point, and she had no support at all. And her son today is living on his own in an apartment, uh, goes out in New York City on his own all the time. And mm -hmm. she has just done an amazing uh, job supporting him. And uh, when you see those kinds of stories, it just um, makes it clear that it is possible to live a meaningful life with autism and, and a life a full life from childhood through adulthood with mm -hmm. autism. Mm -hmm. Do it successfully and thrive. Right. When you were talking with other people, other people with autism, um, what was your immediate takeaway and how long did it take you to uh, come to the conclusion that you've drawn? Well, as I said, I sort of went into it with um, the idea that I, I wanted to go towards acceptance. That was certainly uh, my thinking as it related to Sam, um, and talking to other people uh, sort of helped me to verify that. Um, you know, I think it is important to say that autism is not just a difference, it is also a disability, and there are things about it that are make life more difficult for people who have it, but um, what, what the film did verify for me was that this idea of, of trying to get a recovery or a cure from autism can be sort of uh, distracting to to parents because if you set that up as as the goal and then it doesn't happen, uh, you're kind of disappointed and you you don't want that disappointment to become disappointment in your child. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that is a risk. Whereas if you start from a different place, if you start from a place of acceptance and you ask, well, how can I support my child and how can I put in place uh, things that will help him with uh, the issues that he does have, then I think you're more likely to wind up in a, a place that's better for you and, and maybe better for your child. Mm -hmm. Where will your film be showing? Where, where can people see your film? Uh, it's shown uh, at a couple film festivals uh, so far and uh, I've applied to a number of other film festivals that I'm waiting to hear from. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm also sending it around to various broadcasters that show documentaries and then ultimately it will be uh, available for purchase as a DVD. Mm -hmm. uh, so people can uh, check out uh, the film website to find screenings that might happen in their area or other information about how they might be able to see it. Todd, where can people go to find more information about your film? Uh, the website is called uh, www.lovinglamppostsmovie.com and you can go there to find out about uh, upcoming screenings. You can sign up to be notified when the DVD becomes available and uh, there's a link there also to join the Facebook group if you'd mm -hmm. like to do that. Well, Todd, I know I speak for the whole Autism Hangout community when I say thank you for your labor of love. We look forward to these encouraging messages and if you win some awards at some of these festivals, I hope you come back and tell us. Uh, I will. Thank you. And good luck with the movie. I hope it does well commercially. Any positive message we can get out there about autism is a good message. So, Todd, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Craig. And thank you, Autism Hangout. I'll be back again soon with another special report.